two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Good morning. About to start the uh, build of the uh, Mini Tiorna um, PCB and um, unit for uh, tuning to um, uh, amateur television on um, Q100 satellite. Um, these are the plain boards uh, bought from uh, BATC. Uh, so I've not had to make a PCB up. Uh, and there's the uh, big pile of components. So, uh, summary, I'll be fitting that lot. To that board and um, here are the actual tuners. These are the standard tuners you get in any satellite receiver. They're obviously pre-built and here is my fine tipped weather soldering iron. It's going to be important that. So I'll uh, start putting all the passives on and then uh, run the video again and uh, show you where we're at. Okay so phase two of the board build. I've um, pretty much built uh, both the boards up and um, the only thing is has some a shortage on some of the electrolytics, so uh, you can see they're still not fitted. Um, so I'm still waiting for those to come through from um, from the supplier. But uh, other than that, it's gone together quite well. The remaining parts to be fitted are the um, little FTDI board. This is the uh, the board that interfaces it to the computer. I actually sit in there, and um, the actual. Um, tuner module, the down converter, that uh, will sort of fit in there like that. And you can see the, um, the F-type connectors on the end there for connecting out to the L and B and to the um, source, to the local oscillator source. Of course I've got these little header connectors, these are for future expansion, so uh, probably won't fit those at the moment, but I uh, could add them in later. So, um, just in case of waiting for the electrolytics to arrive, get those fitted and um, then check all the power supply rails are working. Once they're all working, I can fit the other items and um, see if we can get it talking to the computer. The Hammond uh, enclosures have turned up for the uh, Mini Tuna. Quite nice. What I like about these is they um, come with a screw pack, obviously to screw the end pieces on. These are just sort of temporary things to hold it in place and they come with some rubber feet which I can stick onto the box. Well, I have to say in my experience anything you stick on tends to fall off but uh, I've got some really strong super glue so I'd rather use that. The other feature that's nice about these enclosures is because of the ribbed sides um, they've got more surface area if you're using the sides as a heat sink but also the PCB slides into the, uh, the one of you choosing. The only downside is the end pieces are actually plastic. It'd be better if they were metal, particularly where you're connecting RF connectors and looking for a common ground. But there again, you can't have everything. I could always make some out of aluminium. I just don't think they'd look very nice. So uh, next stage will be to um, drill the holes to mount the PCBs and uh, the various apertures for the connectors coming out as well. The Hammond enclosures. Yeah, I thought I'd just do a short video um, showing the end panel being made up for the tuner. Um, I've drilled pilot holes and um, now I'm going to put some big 11mm holes through for the um, F-type connectors to stick through, mount an LED and um, access for the power and for the um, programming cable. Uh, I'm using my pillar drill here in the uh, little modest workshop I've got just to uh, try and keep the holes nice and straight. As I say, it's a shame it's plastic rather than aluminium. Um, or steel even, but uh, yeah, hopefully there won't be too much uh, stray RF flying around and uh, it's certainly a lot easier to drill anyway. So here's the uh, front panel of the unit with all the um, apertures cut into it, one for the LED, the F-type connectors, 
the power and as I say the charging cable and then uh, fit it onto the unit. That's quite a tidy installation. You can see all the capacitors are still missing. I had those delivered yet. So uh, that'll be the final piece of uh, the jigsaw. And of course putting the lid on. We'll be it properly. There she is. After a very long wait for parts on the final build now of the, um, the Tiorna. Um, you see I've uh, fitted the Serret uh, unit for the uh, connection to the LMB in the first stage of the tuner and down converter. I've um, also uh, fitted this little interface, the little um, FT2232 mini module connection for um, the PC. And now you have to put this little mod on to take um, pin four on there down to ground. And um, there's the final one there. There seems to have been a world, I'm gonna plug that little module in, line up the pins, and in it goes. World shortage of capacitors, particularly 680 microfarad capacitors. So I've got a giant 100 volt one on there, it only really requires 50 volts. Um, but it was a case of getting something that fits. Uh, made a bit of a stupid mistake here. I fitted a 3.3 volt Zener, which is a sort of a, a safety circuit really for the power supply on well, this down converter. Takes 12 volts down to, um, or 13.8 volts down to four volts. So that produces 1.1 volts and then 3.3 and 3.3 to drive the Serret module. Uh, and um, yeah, it needed a five volt one in there, not, not 3.3, because of course, um, it's just taking it down to ground and blowing fuses. So we've got through, through a few of those before I realised. But uh, now it's all ready to uh, be assembled and go into the uh, to the cases. Need to put something on for the LED because there's an LED on the front there rather than on the board. So um, I'm going to wire that in manually. You can see the uh, little LED socket there. So I'll uh, sort that out uh, in due course. So uh, yeah, hopefully soon we'll be running with a PC. So the Mini Tiona is uh, now up and running. I've got power to the LMB and um, it's communicating with the PC. I run through all the tests. Um, I'll cover that a little bit later in the video. And um, no smoke. And uh, I've got the software running on the PC now. Um, you can see I've got a carrier, loads of power coming from the LMB in the dish in the garden. There should be a broadcast station, um, well, a number of different broadcast stations on that frequency. As yet, it's not decoding the video, but it's definitely receiving it. So, um, as you can see on the meters down the bottom and on the constellation there, it's all uh, signals, it's got phase and everything. So, uh, it looks like it's uh, it's working. Just need to work out how to uh, decode pictures. There's the other one, as yet untested. But uh, yeah, working well so far. So, I've finally got all the software installed for this little guy. So um, here we are, nicely uh, decoding uh, DBS video off of Astra, and uh, you can see nice strong carrier lock and timing lock, of course it's a huge signal, so it would be, and uh, auto detecting the symbol rates and everything and all the other channels. These are some of the um, applications that come along with the main Mini Tiorno software, allows you to check out the I2C as running properly and you're actually uh, talking to the device. Uh, there's quite a few programs on here for running little tests. You can run noise measurements, you can check the uh, internet connections and um, check that everything's casting to the internet because it has the uh, ability to cast the video you're receiving onto the internet so that other people can see how their signal's being received. So the first thing to do is to run these two programs, uh, run the checks, make sure everything's talking, make sure all the filters are in place and uh, make sure it's able to uh, decode the various codecs, the different video types. And um, that, uh, that all seemed to work quite well. So after I ran the test, you can see all the, uh, all the, little, all the little LEDs have gone green. I uh, mean, it's all running well, and the video is running in the background. Uh, this is the uh, spectrum that you can actually get on the AMSAT DL uh, website. So you can see uh, live the, uh, the beacon on the left hand side and um, see people that are casting videos. Um, I've had to uh, focus on the narrow band stuff because my dish isn't really able to cope with the broader band things, including the beacon. Um, but after a little bit of tweaking around, you could see we were locked onto the satellite. The carrier SR light and the uh, full light are green. Um, but it wasn't decoding video and it's because the um, signal to noise wasn't good enough. Tweaked around the uh, LMB and the dish and uh, this is the first bit of video I captured. 
um, streaming quite nicely, uh, albeit at a low uh, symbol rate. Um, the quality is quite reasonable, and um, that was from um, Echo Alpha 3 November Echo. And you can see all the channels come up on the auto pits at the top there, and that populates it with the uh, right information. And then finally, um, these two German chaps were just having a, um, a video conference two-way using the satellite, which I thought was great. Uh, received those uh, quite nicely, and uh, that was working really well for them. They had quite a long cast there. Um, so, yeah, that's all working, and that ends the uh, project of the Mini Tourno. Thanks uh, for watching. Spacecraft separation confirmed. And there it is, a beautiful sight as S-Hail 2 floats away again Processing to provide communications from 